Hello. Welcome to Torn Edge. <laughs> uh, hopefully we're live again. Never really know if I am. I think so. <laughs> um, I saw Trio Monkey in the chat there just beforehand. He's excited, still excited. <laughs> good to hear, good to hear. <laughs> um, I'm excited for today too. It's another crafty Sunday. It felt like a crafty Sunday, although I will warn you guys, I'm a little bit like, I'm a little bit all over the place today. I don't really know why, but like I have an idea of what I want to do for you guys today. Hopefully it actually works out uh, and I actually end up making like what I'm planning to make for you guys. But really, like I said, today will be a bit of an experiment. So if you looked at the um, thumbnail and the title, uh, we're going to be making some miniature bento box type things. I don't... I can't necessarily say that like it's all bento box related like I, these okay so I started off making like these guys so they almost <laughs> they kind of remind me of like a um what am I thinking like a crock pot sort of thing um but it's got like the cooker on the inside but it's almost like it's like a steamer sort of thing so I started off making these and then I got more into it and decided to do uh like different shaped bento like actual like containers so that's what these guys are are just like these little containers that i made so i made one in a flower shape and one in a heart and these are this is that um granite yes i believe it's called granite uh and then this one is opal it sucks i'm so annoyed that you can't see but this actually has like flecks of like opal shards in it so it looks super super cool I really, really like it. Um, so yeah, anyways, that's what's going on there. So uh, I guess we can just kind of like get into that. I So we're going to be making like the different ingredients for these bento boxes. So I was thinking like I might make one kind of like a, um, what am I thinking? Um, like a ramen kind of soup and use a little bit of uh, resin to finish it off, uh, make like the resin, the soup. Um, and then the other kind of thing I love was like the pictures that I put on the thumbnail where it's almost like they like shape like rice cakes into like look like bears and stuff like that. Um, so I thought like that would be kind of cute with like the lettuce at the bottom and then like the couple different um, things in it. like. <laughs> There's these little, I, oh my God, like, what are they called? Those, like, cocktail wieners. <laughs> it's like cocktail wieners, but they, like, cut them halfway and make them look like octopuses, and it looks really funny. <laughs> so, I was thinking to do that, too. Like, make some of those rice cakes um, that are, like, different shapes, and then add the little things into the bento boxes, like the sliced egg, and I don't know what it's called, but, like, uh... I want to say it's like a type of fish stick to be honest but like they're those like round pieces and they almost have like a red swirl in them you see them in Asian cooking a lot um that like we'll add some of that into there maybe some green onions into it uh all that different type of stuff so it'll be exciting 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 okie dokie so okay so I'm thinking maybe we should do like one of these cookers and one of the like lunchbox um, ones that I did. And then we can make one into the bento box and one into uh, like that ramen kind of thing. So I, I kind of want to make the ramen in this guy here um, just because I think like the resin will fit a little bit nicer into like a heart than it will something like this shape. Um, so that's kind of why I'm leaning towards the heart for uh, the, um, what am I thinking, for the ramen, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking, <laughs> okay, so, and then I, like, I have some updates for you guys today, I don't, I honestly don't have a whole lot, like, last time we talked was Thursday, there was quite a few updates that day, um, there has been quite a bit that's been going on, um, some of it I can't talk about it, other things I can't, so I won't. 
yeah, so we'll kind of talk about little things that I've seen here and there. And then I thought, like, we could just, like, chat. I might talk a little bit about, like, my childhood and what it was like growing up overseas um, and stuff like that. So, uh, oh, hey, Glow, how's it going? <laughs> I will check my DMs. Thank you, Glow. And enjoy your dinner. You totally come back. It, yes, it's, like, it's 5 o'clock. 5 30 here so like I just had a little bite to eat before I started uh so totally understandable you go eat your dinner that is more important <laughs> um okay so yeah there there's still some like updates here and there um Gabby Hanna is still kind of going crazy uh there's a little bit more of an update on the Jeff Wittick stuff he has now put out a, po a part four um to his injury uh like his story of his injury I guess um, and then, <coughs> what else is there? Like, yeah, we talked about James Charles getting sued. I haven't seen a whole lot about that. Uh, I did see though that like Emily D Baker is covering that. So she might be a good place to go if you're interested in following that case. Um, I mean, I'm interested in the outcome of that case. I don't know that I'm like interested to follow it as much as like reading court filings. I, meh. I don't care that much about it. So, but I, but I am interested to know like what the outcome will be, uh, but that's a long ways away, I think. So I'll wait for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there hasn't been a whole lot with that. I haven't even like checked up on Katie recently. Oh, but there's been actually, that's maybe something we can talk about today. Um, a Josh Duggar was arrested on some like really disgusting charges. And I mean, <laughs> as much as you hate Katie, Katie was right on that one. Um, and I actually remember watching Katie when she broke that, uh, the Duggars, like he had had his car lot raided or whatever. So I remember back then being like, oh my gosh, something's going on. But then nothing ever happened from that. And then Katie's reputation kind of, uh, or at least her credibility a little bit. Um, and so I kind of like questioned if that was actually happening, unfortunately for her, but, uh, no, she was right about it. Um, and even like the charges, she was like pretty spot on about, though, again, I will still disagree with her about her statistics about, um, uh, children who are abused, reoffending, uh, things like that. I just slightly agree or disagree on that. Um, yes, it is a statistic and it does happen. Um, but Katie makes it sound like it happens a lot more than it really does. Um, so, and, and regardless, we still don't know that that is something that has happened to Josh Duggar and that is why he did what he did. I personally don't really think, I, I, I'm not even going to get into it. I don't know what I think on that. I don't, like, I don't follow the Duggars like somebody like Katie does, so I don't really have, like, a full opinion on that, but, like, I don't know, man. I will say that I do think that his family was helping to cover for him in some ways, which is icky. Um, so we can talk about that, too, maybe today. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, like, yeah, like, Gabby had nothing really going on with Katie. Um, so those, like, yeah, there's, there's not a whole lot going on recently. So I don't know. We'll see. But, um, anyways, so let's move on to like some of this place. So I'm just, okay. So this opal one, because this has like shards of opal in it, sometimes it gets really, <laughs> those shards of opal, um, kind of go everywhere and it makes for some like uneven edges at times and things like that so that's just kind of what I'm like fixing right now is just where those shards of opal may have kind of like popped their head out sort of thing where I didn't really want them to so yeah um okay then okay so I think what I'm gonna start doing do I want to start with like the ramen or do I want to start with bento I think I'm gonna start with the bento um so what I mm, I this is like what I've been struggling with all day is like I'm not sure like what kind of bento box I want to make <laughs> there's a million different kinds of bento boxes and I just don't know what you know like I don't know there's just a million different things so 
I think what I might, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at some ideas here. Hey, Kathy, I'll see you soon too. <laughs> um, I'm looking at some ideas here and like, I don't know if anybody knows those like kind of like triangle rice cakes that have a little bit of the, um, so I, uh, seaweed on them. Uh, I was thinking of possibly making those or like a rice. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows of Rilakkuma, which is like a, um, it's a Japanese character, like a, um, yeah, he's just like a little teddy bear. His name is Rilakkuma and he's super cute. Uh, so I was thinking of just making that, which is literally like your basic teddy <laughs> face, um, out of rice. So I think, I think I can do both and I kind of want to try the real Akuma one today because it's just like a little bit more difficult. Um, so yeah, let's do that. We're going to start with the real Akuma one and I'm going to do that. Yeah, I'm going to do it in my like blue slow cooker <laughs> that I made already. So these guys are really, I made these um, very similarly to uh, the, like the same way that I made, um, these guys are little like steamed bun things. You cut out the bottom and then you just cut out a strip that you put around, uh, your cooker or whatever you're making, right? Uh, this one, I just made one, one size and one a little bit smaller and then just pop them inside of each other. Um, it, when they're wet, it is a little bit like finicky to get that one in there again. Uh, you can do it in two bakes if you want, if you want it to be like, you know, perfect, perfect, then you can do it that way. I felt that I could put them in at the same time, so that's what I did. So, okay, I'm gonna get a little bit of like rice out here. Well, like the color I'm gonna use for rice. So I am going to use like a white translucent color. Now, this, doing this rice might be kind of funny for you guys. Well, it might be a little bit boring for you guys to watch because it's one of those, th there's a lot of things within clay that just like turn out to be really tedious at times because, you know, like in order to create grains of rice, you, you have to create grains of rice. <laughs> so, um, it, that's what we're going to do today. We're not like big ones, obviously, but, um, yeah, it just like, it, it takes, it just takes time. So you guys will see me make a whole bunch of little like rice grains today. <laughs> um, and then, I mean, obviously some people when they want to recreate a rice finish will just use a dotting tool and kind of like make that rice finish uh, just with a dotting tool. But others, like, yeah, others, I don't know. I've done it both ways. I've done it where I've just textured it and then I've also done it where I've like made each grain of rice. And I find that making each grain of rice looks better. <laughs> so even though it's like, <laughs> it can be really tedious and take a really long time. Um, meh. <laughs> oh well. Uh, I am like, the whole point of this for me at least is like, I mean, I love doing this. So obviously the tedious stuff isn't like as fun, but um, it's, it's the end result that you get from all that like tedious work, right? So that's kind of where I'm like, mm, I don't mind doing it that much. <laughs> um, but it depends. I mean, there are some, like, oh, I don't know if anybody has ever heard of, like, paper quilling or whatever, or, like, paper spinning. Oh, hey, Exiled. Hey, Camara. Um, welcome to Crafty Tea Night, Sunday night. <laughs> um, we're making, I'll just, like, update you guys. Uh, we're going to be making some little, like, bento dinner dishes. I'm going to make a... Um, a ramen and like a just a bento box but I'm gonna try and make it I don't know if anybody's ever heard of real Akuma um, but he's like a really cute uh, Japanese uh, character um, Japanese Chinese I'm, I'm not sure exactly like who developed him so I don't know where he's from but in that area um, and he's just a really cute little teddy bear uh, my son actually watches the show on Netflix every once in a while um, it's really cute it's got like a really aesthetic feel so uh, but like everybody loves real Akuma. I wish I could like show you guys real Akuma. I'm not even sure. Maybe <sighs> actually, let me just check. I, I'm not looking at my thumbnail from today, but I can like tell you what I put on my thumbnail. Oh yeah. Okay. I didn't put a real Akuma on there, but like the little boy 
it like the little teddy bear that's on his head that he's wearing as a hat is kind of like real cool. <laughs> so that works. Uh, okay, and then the other thing I want to make before we do anything is I want to get a, li a little bit of green out to put some lettuce in the bottom. So it like, you can even see it in the thumbnail. Like a lot of times they'll line the bottom of the bento boxes with lettuce. So that's what we're gonna do here. <laughs> um, that's what, like, this is why I love making miniature foods because it's just like, <laughs> I don't know, like it's, it's big foods made tiny, right? It's so cute. And, but literally like the best way to think about it is how would you make your, how would you make your bento box, right? Just make a miniature. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I will show you guys how to make that um, lettuce as well. Super, super easy to make lettuce um, look really realistic. <laughs> so, oh, I see CJ. Oh, and the Holy Spackle. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hopefully this like sent out notifications. I don't know if it did. It was a little bit slow to to see people come in, which is fine. Like, <laughs> I will repeat myself and try and update, like tell you guys what we're making as you pop in. So, um, oh CJ, I like your jacket. Oh, thank you. I got this for Christmas. <laughs> um, it's a really nice sweater. I don't know. It's like, it's actually long. Like it goes like mid thigh, I guess. So I, th that's honestly my favorite part about the sweater. <laughs> I just love that it's a long sweater. I feel so like sophisticated wearing it, <laughs> even though I'm not. <laughs> Okie dokie. Okay, so I'm gonna start, I decided I was gonna do um, our little heart bento box. And then, so well actually this guy's gonna be our bento box, which is like a little cooker. And then this guy's gonna be our ramen noodles. So, let's make some lettuce here. <laughs> So I just got a little bit of green out. The only thing, so something I hate, like with, uh, with polymer clay, you can get, you can obviously get different types of clay, right? So there's, um, there's like Sculpey, uh, God, Sculpey 3, Sculpey Firm, Fimo, Fimo Soft, Fimo Professional. Like there are so so many different kinds of polymer clay, let alone from like, I usually use Fimo and Sculpey. They're just kind of the easiest to find. I know there are better um, and different brands out there. Um, okay, so literally I'm making lettuce right now. <laughs> this is how easy it is. I just put a little circle in there and then um, like I'm using a big ball stylus and I'm just kind of like pushing it till I get really thin edges that kind of look like lettuce. <laughs> and then I just give it a little bit of texture. I'm like, that's our lettuce. Woo! <laughs> so funny. Sorry, you guys can like see every, all the reflection of my like, Discord. <laughs> it's just my Discord that I'm looking at. So don't worry. It's just all my own stuff for my channel. <laughs> but so yeah, I'm just going to, peel this off of here and I'm just gonna make a couple pieces of lettuce okay so that I can like uh work with them and put them where I want them as I want them I guess if that makes sense <laughs> um but yeah so I forget what I, I don't know if I was like actually talking about something other than clay Oh, I was talking about like the firmness and stuff of different types of clay. So I personally like slightly firmer clays um, because I find I don't have to be so delicate with it. Um, you know, I don't have to worry about all of my fingerprints showing in it um, because that is something that happens like once I get my shop up and, and somebody gets the chance to buy something from me, like you will notice my fingerprints in it. <laughs> um, there's nothing I can do to get rid of. Well, I mean, there is things I can do to get rid of it, but in certain situations, it's extremely difficult. And personally, I think it's like a personal touch to be completely honest. Like that's how you know what you got was handmade. My, my damn fingerprints in it. 
<laughs> right? So uh, that's kind of something I don't want to take away, but there are people who get angry at clay artists all the time um, because, like, my earrings have fingerprints in them. You're like, well, they're handmade. Uh, sorry. <laughs> right? So it's, I find it kind of crazy that people are willing to complain about that. I'm like, well, you just got handmade earrings. Like, what? What? I mean, obviously, if it's really bad, right? Like, the, you know, that that's something I work on to try and, like, make my quality better is, like, less fingerprints, right? But it can be really, really difficult. So I find this green that I'm using right now is, like, super, super soft. It mu I must have bought, like, a Sculpey 3 or something in it. Um... And honestly, I mean, like, if they have, some of them they only have in certain colors and stuff like that. And, like, I'm the type that I will work with the clay if the color is worth it. <laughs> if the color is, like, the perfect color that I want of clay, I'm like, I'll work with it. I don't care how much I hate you. Because <laughs> I'm like, but the color. <laughs> so, and I mean, I'm, I worked in makeup before doing this and... Like, color is just something I enjoy. I like color, right? So, it's always been something that I've enjoyed. <laughs> so, like, I'm the type of person, when I see a beautiful color, I'm just like, wow, so pretty. <laughs> so, all right. So, you can see, like, I'm kind of getting some lettuce pieces <laughs> over here. I'm going to maybe do, like, two more, I think I need. Um, and I should be able to like fill the bottom of that and it's funny. I mean, I made this I Originally the thing I was gonna make was like kind of like skewers or kebabs of some sort But I didn't know what I don't know what they are like I literally don't know what they're called <laughs> And I, I tried to like look it up and I was like well the closest thing I could find was yakitori, which is like um chicken and like beef skewers and stuff like that, but like they weren't they were like steamed bun skewers, it looked like. Or, as some people like to call them, sushi sticks. <laughs> the basics like to call them sushi sticks. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just making bunnies. <laughs> Being silly. Hey Kai, hey Dad, how's it going? I'm not sure if I said hi, so I just wanted to make sure I did. Uh, I just realized I haven't had my chat up here this whole time, so like, I've been looking on here, but I haven't really been looking anywhere else. I'm gonna try and like actually pop out my chat today because for once I'm at not so nervous <laughs> that I can like pay attention to the things I should be doing. <laughs> So uh, I'm starting to get a little bit more comfortable on here. <laughs> Perfect. Ooh, awesome. I can like see your guys' chat great now. This is great. <laughs> All right. So, okay. So I guess I can get into like a little bit of the updates for what I've seen out there. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about like the Jeff Wittick stuff, which is the... Um, Vlog Squad, I know a lot of people, like, I I don't even really follow the Vlog Squad. It was just the stuff with David Dobrik when it kind of broke with his, like, ex-roommate, that dirty Dom guy. Uh, when that all broke, it was just so big that, like, it would, again, it was one of those train wrecks that I couldn't help but look towards. And um, I didn't even know who Jeff Winnick was. I didn't even know he had had an accident. I didn't know any of this stuff. Uh, it was actually, like, it was watching the, the H3H3 with, uh, Trisha Paytas that I was, where she was asking him about what had happened. Uh, and he, it was actually his reaction in that, that made me be like, cause he was very like, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. And like, well, he wasn't like mad that I'm just, <laughs> I'm exaggerating. I'm exaggerating. Um, but he very much just didn't want to talk about it, right? And Trisha Paytas, like, respected that as well, right? <laughs> but like I said, it had come out later that uh, he did end up losing his eye uh, during an accident while he was filming for the vlog squad. And, like, ooh, the, I think it was, like, part, 
part two or three. I'm not sure which part has the actual footage of the like um, accident. Oh, oh, I couldn't watch it. It was just so. I just I like I can't watch people get hurt on skateboards. So I definitely couldn't watch that. It's just, I just ugh, it was just a lot. And so he basically got slammed into the side of an excavator. Um, and I'm pretty sure at part four in this right now, he still has his eye. So he hasn't even lost his eye yet. And it's been like a month and a half since then. Or I mean, since the accident and like filming this, right? Obviously it's been a long time after that, but, um, uh, it was only like a month and a half maybe a month after the accident and he still had his eye but he was having like major issues with like double vision and brain literal brain damage um and stuff like that hey dutchy pk hey april how's it going um thanks for stopping by by the way uh and yeah like he was just having major major issues with his eye like beyond his eye right he got it he had a surgery. He'd gone through a couple surgeries, I think. And then he had a surgery where he, um, uh, they, uh, what am I thinking? They stitched his eye closed for two weeks, which is like that. I can actually see that being very uncomfortable because think about it. Like it takes muscle to keep your eye closed. So that would actually be very uncomfortable. Um, to just have your eye stuck that way. It would hurt the muscle. Um, and things it's just I just it just would be uncomfortable and then oh he ends up cutting out his own stitches in his eye which is like he's like oh my god we've all gone through like we've all gone through this um or sorry uh what am I thinking no he just yeah he had to cut his the stitches out of his eye and he just Oh, it was, he had, he had a straight razor or scissors and he's like talking to his friend. He's like, so which one should I use? Like, and it's like, oh my God, please don't use a straight razor on your eye. And his friend is trying to be so supportive. And she's like, um, well, uh, scissors. <laughs> like she's trying so hard. And like, that would be me too. I'd be like, ah, ooh, ooh, maybe not the best idea. <laughs> You know, like just, just trying to be supportive and the poor guy is terrified and he's not sure if when he cuts like these stitches out of his eye, he's going to be able to see out of his eye. And that's what ends up happening is he can't see out of his eye when he cuts it open. And that's a mate, like he's just sat there waiting two weeks for his eye to heal. And then when he cuts it open, he can't see. It's devastating. Devastating. So, yeah, like it, like, ugh, it's just so sad. And then, so the other thing that, like, super bugs me about this. So I guess when he, like, first went in. So I'm just putting a little bit of um, Sculpey Bake and Bond, <laughs> which is just like a glue for clay that it doesn't work until it's baked. Uh, so you have to make sure you bake it, obviously, but... Um, it is a great little tool, but yeah, it's it like, don't, don't put it on two things of, uh, baked, baked and baked clay, <laughs> that thing don't work. Um, so yeah, so the other thing that really bothered me about this whole situation was, so I guess like the day that this all happened, first off, <sighs> so David Dobrik was operating this excavator without a license. <laughs> just just like no shit like no shit and then um sorry guys i just want to make sure yeah okay but um ah sorry i totally lost my train of thought uh oh yeah so when they got to the hospital that day like <laughs> so he didn't have a license and i think he had a broken arm at the time so he was operating it with one arm and like his thought was to launch Jeff into the water, but he just got stuck on the rope and came back at the excavator. So like really stupid. Anyway, 
when he got to the hospital, nobody would let anybody go in with Jeff except for David. And the reason for this was because if Jeff didn't make it, David was going to be arrested. <laughs> um, like, the doctors of Jeff said that David is lucky to not be arrested for what he did. Because he almost killed someone. Like, he literally almost killed someone. So, I don't know. And then, so he gets through this. He's been doing this. Like, apparently this whole time, like, nobody else is really allowed to see Jeff in the hospital but David. And I don't understand why that's the case. I think that he obviously was maybe allowed to have family, but like no friends other than David were allowed to be there. And like, gosh. first off, like, do you really want the person who almost killed you to be the only person who can see you right now? Like, I know for me, no. I'd be like, yeah, I think I need a little bit of break <laughs> from you right now. Uh, you know, I just... I don't know. Uh, and then on top of that, David, this is all going down, right? Okay, so I'm just putting the lettuce into our little bento box. So I'm gonna kinda just like place this down how I want it in our bento box. And then just kinda like push it where it needs to go and shape it. But yeah, so he's like the only person that David's allowed to, or that Jeff's allowed to see. And yeah, for me, I'm kind of like, oh, I don't know that I would want that. Like, I don't know that we're like the best of friends anymore since you smashed me into the side of an excavator. <laughs> right? And so I just, I don't really, and I just don't really understand why that's the case. Like, why can't he have people visiting him, right? Like, I don't know. And then on top of it, so he gets out of hospital and like David doesn't really contact him. And David's excuse is, oh, it's because like I, I didn't want to make it worse than it already was. I didn't want to make it a big deal. I just, I wanted it, I wanted him to be able to like live life as normal um, and not have to like think about this every day. Like, no, actually, David, you don't have to think about it every day. You don't have to think about this every day because you don't get up and look in the mirror every day and see that you've lost an eye. Like, whoa, dude. And so, like, and Jeff said that. He said it was really hard to, like, heal when, like, the person's just not around. It's really hard to forgive somebody who's just not around. Right? So it's, oh, I, don't I don't know, man. I don't know. It's, I just, I don't know. Everybody always said that, like, David Dobrik was kind of callous and uncaring and, like, a little bit of a weirdo and, you know, all these sorts of things. That, like, I mean, everybody's got their opinions about everybody, right? But that, I, to me, that's messed up. That is a shitty friend. Like, no, you come around. And I mean, even if you're having a hard time coming to terms with what you did to your friend, disappearing is not the way to deal with that. Ugh. Your friend deserves your support after that. At least. Right? Like, right? Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just a crazy one, guys. <laughs> But I somehow feel like I'm not. <laughs> so, who knows? Okay, so if you guys can see, I'm like kind of cutting some of these in half. Because I want to have like, I want it to look like good lettuce, right? So you can like see a little bit there, like we're getting that lettuce look. Right? So I'm not worried too much about like the bottom there. Obviously, you can like see spots of it and things like that. I am kind of going to fill that in as we go here. Um, but like, I'm going to be trying to fill these little bento boxes in anyway. So 
but we should be able to cover it with like our rice cakes, our little cocktail wiener octopuses, you know, all that kind of stuff. We'll be able to cover up some of that. <laughs> okay. <coughs> okay, I'm going to look at chat because I think... <laughs> Okay, I see April talking, April Diamond talking about something in chat that was really, really funny, which I completely agree with. Um, April in chat. <laughs> I noticed this yesterday when April came into uni's chat and uh, said that she had been blocked by a certain rocket lover. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's not that surprising, but what'd you say? <laughs> she literally said, well, let's see how this ages. And his comeback was age, something you don't have on your profile. Do you know how many people don't have their age on their damn profile? Do you have your age on your profile? <laughs> like, that's probably the easiest way to just be like, ah, oh, block. <laughs> but, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> block, I love rockets. <laughs> Anyways, that whole situation is like, maybe next week uh, I can talk a little bit more on it, but like I, there's not much I can say. Obviously people know some things are brewing and all I can say is keep your eyes out. <laughs> keep your eyes out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, that whole situation is cray cray. So, but I, I, I hope you don't mind me sharing uh, with everybody, April, what happened, um, just because it was, I just found it funny, <laughs> I just found it a little ridiculous that you're gonna get blocked for not putting your age out there, when these people run around being like, I'm gonna get doxxed if you follow me to a gas station, <laughs> crazy, 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 do you live at that gas station? No, no, don't ask me where I live. <laughs> right? So it's just, it's just funny coming from perpetual victims. <laughs> of, of the same thing over and over again. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Who knows? Who freaking knows of that junk Oh, I should share this guy. So, okay, so it was my husband's um, birthday a couple nights ago. So we went to the liquor store and got a couple things. These are delicious, if anybody. So I am having a cider tonight. Um, but this went Saskatoon Berry. Ooh, ooh, it's so good. <laughs> so maybe that's why I'm more comfortable tonight. No, I'm kidding. It's probably not. Booze does not make me more comfortable, I'll be honest. It, it, it probably makes me a bit more anxious than anything. So, you know. Um, but yeah, I just think it's really shitty. Like, that Jeff Wittick deserves better friends. <laughs> we'll just say that much. Uh, yeah, I just wish that, like... I, uh, it's just really crappy, right? Like poor guy like but at the same time like and there's a lot of people that are saying well this is all David's fault it's all David's fault blah, 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 blah. and I'm like well yes where it is like a lot of it is David's fault and I do think that he needs to take more responsibility for his part in it um Jeff also like participated right like obviously when you get into accidents like that you you can't foresee what the what is going to happen or predict what is going to happen in that specific instance, right? So, like, you couldn't have ever predicted that. Nobody could have. But, you know, like, you have to have two, two willing participants for that to have happened, and it did. And that is what it took. So, I just don't think it's necessarily fair to say it's, all David's fault as well because you know like like yes it's his vlog and this this and that and you know but I mean everybody there wants to make good content as well so you know it's just 
But yeah, apparently, uh, oh, actually, yeah. So another crazy part about that whole situation. Okay, so they got a lettuce. It just looks like a big green glob right now, but like on the sides, it kind of looks more like lettuce, right? And if we need to add uh, like little bits in later, we can. Um, surprisingly, I took out like the perfect amount just to fill that. So now we're gonna like get into the rice here. Uh, I'm just gonna wipe off my gloves a wee bit here. Just because that green is pretty dark and I don't want it to transfer to this like translucent white that we're about to use for the rice, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but okay, yeah, so like this is the other thing. So, uh, David Dobrik wasn't really doing a whole lot <laughs> during that whole situation. He didn't really help, he didn't really do anything. There was no medic on standby. And they literally had to get like someone else to drive them to the hospital when this happened. Craziest thing though is that this, apparently there was this family that drove Jeff Wittick to the hospital. They took pictures of him and then blackmailed him. They were like, if you don't pay us this much, we're gonna release the photos of your accident. Oh, what? Like, what? So they obviously knew who they were when they picked them up sort of thing. So like that legit happened, which is just like, wow, poor guy, like poor guy gets freaking blackmailed trying to get to the hospital. It's like, wow, 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 wow. And I just like, that's the other thing. I can't even believe, I can't, I can't believe that he was able to get in a car that he didn't need an ambulance. You know, I, oh, crazy. Cra I mean, I, he probably did, but they were like in a lake far, far away. So who knows, right? I don't, I don't really know. But uh, <laughs> craziness, craziness. So, um, okay. But yeah, like that, that, I guess that's like the Jeff story, right? I just, I can't help but follow it because I just, I feel a feel for the guy, like, <laughs> losing your eye is traumatic. Um, and, like, th I'm pretty sure there's about to be a part five as well of this, so, which is showing him, like, actually realizing he is going to lose his eye. And it's just, ugh, oh, it's really shitty really shitty and that's the thing like you can when you're in a situation like that you've got friends you've got people who support you right and those things are great but like they're I just can't imagine what it's like to like brush your teeth and look in the mirror before you go to bed like that's just a really shitty feeling um to have to feel that and remember that and you're alone in those moments right and so you're not, you know, trying to be happy for anybody. And I just, I just imagine those moments are pretty tough. So yeah, like, and to know that like your friend did it and he just like, doesn't really care to like, even be around you to like, check up on you. It's really sad, sad. So I don't know if they're still friends now um, but who knows? I mean, I would not blame Jeff if he did not want to be friends with him after that. I don't know that I would want to be friends. Um, I'd have a really hard time forgiving somebody for that. I'd have a really hard time forgiving myself for that too, though. Um, it also another really, you know, hard thing, right? So, yeah. Okay. So I'm literally just making my tiny, tiny grains of rice. So I don't know if you guys can like see it's a tiny little thing. So I'm just, I like rolled it into a tiny little log and I'm cutting little pieces off and then I'm just rolling each piece lengthwise in between my fingers and it looks, that makes it, the ends taper and we get more of that like rice grain look. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna just take a look at chat here in like two seconds too, because 
I'll be kind of honest, like, I'm a little bit flying off the seat of my pants for what I'm making, what I'm talking about tonight. I just didn't have a whole lot. <laughs> um, I had some ideas for us to what to make and some ideas for what to talk to, but, like, I'm definitely not set on absolutely having to talk about anything, right? So if you guys have something you want to talk about in chat, ask away, and we'll chat about it. But I guess actually, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna start telling you guys a little bit just about like my childhood. <laughs> um, so I I've mentioned it on here before, but I actually grew up overseas, and I was like super lucky. I always say this like I, I was privileged to be able to do that, <laughs> uh, 100%. And I just tried to, like, not take that for granted. That privilege that I did have growing up, I try to not take it for advantage, uh, take it for granted because I was able to have some experiences that some people will never have in their lives. And I'm so, so thankful for that. And that, you know, like, we, my dad is a petroleum engineer, so that was how we ended up overseas um and we ended up overseas in indonesia so we lived in indonesia jakarta indonesia for about 10 years um i moved there when i was four came back when we were four when i was 14. so that was like the first place that i ever went to public school um well, I guess it it wasn't public school, technically. I went to an international school there. Um, so that's why I say, like, I've always grown up in a very multicultural world. Um, I've always grown up around so many different cultures and um, ethnicities. And um, I really, I've loved that. I, I think learning about people's culture and all these sorts of things is just like so cool. And when I travel, which I don't travel as much now because well, one, especially this year, but it's also just like traveling is just expensive. <laughs> I wish I could travel more. Um, and that was the one thing I've always said is that growing up um, overseas gave me this like insatiable travel like need to travel or want to travel. And um, sometimes I wish that wasn't the case because travel is so expensive. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, Mira, happy birthday, Mr. Torn. Thank you, I will let him know. <laughs> um, I just wanna see like what everybody's talking about. <laughs> Exiled rocket boy. <laughs> April Diamond, I'll show my birth certificate when visiting all Burger Kings in the future. <laughs> but um bum cha. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just like Ooh, April's going hiking for a few days. Dude, hiking? Oh, I love hiking. Um, I love hiking. I just, like, you're going to laugh at me, but I'm, like, totally the person who I'm, like, I will hike just to get that, like, beautiful picture of a view. <laughs> and, like, you know what? Who cares? I don't even care. If, if that's what's motivating me, who cares? I'm doing it. <laughs> right? But yeah, I'm totally like, I just want to get to the summit and take a picture of this beautiful view so I can say I've been here. <laughs> so, and there's like, I am close to quite, I'm, I'm really close to the Rocky Mountains. So that's, that's half the reason I love getting out so much is because it's mostly in the Rocky Mountains that I do it. So it's awesome. <laughs> I am lucky in that aspect, living in Canada now. So. 
but yeah, like I grew up, so I grew up overseas, so I was thinking actually something like, maybe we can talk about that you guys like, might get a little into. I was thinking about like doing a video about it, but it just hasn't worked out. I did write an entire script and the script got, uh, <laughs> loving the Canadian uniform, dad. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, oh shoot, what was I saying? Oh yeah, okay, so something that I thought you guys like might actually kind of get into a little bit, and we can, we can totally talk about it on this live, because like I said, I don't have any rules right now of like what I'm doing. Uh, so, um, what am I thinking? Okay, so, I actually, <laughs> ironically, Growing up overseas, somehow, I have managed to run into two people I have had be part of my life that landed on America's most wanted list. <laughs> and both are actually from my time living overseas. Which I always find crazy because it's like, you would think that you would like, I don't know, for some reason I feel like I would like be more likely to meet like a Canadian criminal or somebody who I know like might get arrested here type thing. But like for, for me to know somebody who like we were living abroad and they are like a, a citizen of another country, like. For some reason, so th th obviously that's why they ended up on America's Most Wanted, not Canada's, <laughs> uh, because they were American. So, okay, so I'll tell you about the first one. So the first one, uh, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to say like their full name, obviously. I mean, if you were to go look them up, you can probably figure this out. It's pretty easy because they were on America's Most Wanted, so... Um, but anyways, uh, the, uh, what is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. See, I know. I told you, I told you I'd hook you with this one. <laughs> um, okay. So the first person, so I knew, I knew a girl that ended up on America's Most Wanted and I knew a man that ended up on America's Most Wanted. So the girl was actually super close in age with me. So she was like, I, I want to say she was maybe like one or two years older than I was. And her name was Morgan. And like she, I didn't hang out a whole lot with her. I, I swear like I maybe was on like a sports team with her or something like that. And that was like kind of how I knew of her because like I said, she wasn't really in my grade. Um, but she wasn't far off from my grade. So I still knew of her, right? Sorry, this is like, see, you guys can see how tedious making all these little teeny tiny grains of rice is now. But I think it's really gonna like pay off for the look that we're going for. So anyways, uh, so yeah, this girl, now the other thing, I should say this too. Uh, how, oh my gosh, we've almost been on here for an hour. I can't stay on too long tonight, uh, so, like, I kind of really only have, like, half an hour left, so I'm, we might not get to finish these today, but if we don't finish them today, I will save this stuff, and we'll finish them next Sunday, uh, or on Wednesday, one of the two, not too sure, but I will, like, save the stuff so that we can continue on with this, uh, because I was a little bit concerned about that, I was like, oh, shoot, like, some days are supposed to be the days that we finish a craft, maybe not today, <laughs> uh, we might have to do this one in a, in a part de. <laughs> um, but anyway, okay, so this girl Morgan, so she was a year older than I was. She's a little bit of a badass, like, and I think that was why I was like, maybe drawn to her a little bit. Uh, she was definitely the type, like we had a dress code, uh, you couldn't wear like spaghetti straps and stuff like that. So, uh, which is so funny, like, I actually look back, I remember I totally switched into a spaghetti strap for like, school pictures. Because I was like, I just want to break the rules. 
because you know that's how I always am. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so yeah, she was like the type of girl who would like wear one thing to school, but like pack a change clothes in a backpack that was like a lot more risque. <laughs> And then uh, she would come to school and wear those clothes. <laughs> She'd like go to the bathroom and change into her risque clothes. And we'd all be like, oh, okay, yeah. So her parents never really knew what she was wearing. Um, and like, I remember back then, like she used to smoke. Um, which was like something, I didn't even ever try a cigarette until I was like 19. Um, uh, mostly because I was just, you know, my, my grandpa passed away from cancer. Uh, and the one thing he always, I asked him what his one piece of advice was before he passed away. And he told me never smoke. And so even, and I have been a smoker at one point and I felt so guilty about it because of that. Um, because he's right. He is absolutely right. Don't fucking smoke. It is so bad for you. <laughs> um, but, uh, so yeah, so I, I never like smoked with her, but I remember, like that's what I remember. I remember her just like kind of being a badass and me being like, I may be a little bit interested. <laughs> because I was young, right? Like you're, who knows, right? You don't know what you're getting into when you're young. So anyways, what ended up happening with her? So like, I, she ended up like moving away from Indonesia. I don't know where she went with her family. I think she went back to the States. Um, obviously like a lot the majority of the students at my school were from the States. Uh, that doesn't mean they all are. Obviously, I was Canadian. Um, but just the, like the majority, right? So a lot of people would end up going back to the States when they would move away. So I don't even know like what happened to her or where she went. Because the next time I heard about her was on America's Next... America's Most Wanted. And I was like, oh, well. <laughs> this just got very interesting. I'm leaning it on my elbows, right, Dad? Um, so yeah, I, she was on America's Most Wanted, dubbed as the Ponytail Bandit. <laughs> because she was robbing banks. <laughs> and she would put on a baseball cap and put her ponytail through the, like, hole of the baseball cap. And she would go up to the tellers and give them the note being like, give me all your money, right? Because that's actually, like... I want to say that that's like probably the most common way that bank robberies happen is that somebody comes up to the counter and hands them a note saying, give me all your money type thing. Uh, because they don't want anybody else to know that that's what's happening, right? That, that, that they're stealing money from the bank, right? So, uh, yeah, she ended up getting caught. Craziest thing though is she got caught in Thailand, and her family had helped her flee. So she was like hiding away in Thailand. Um, and it just like wasn't surprising at all that she was in Thailand, just, you know, like knowing our background with like uh, living overseas, she knew that area of the world, right? So yeah, just crazy. Yeah, you think you remember that one, Dad? Yeah, so I went to, I went to school with her. Uh, she was a little bit of a wild child. <laughs> um, I think her, like, she was, uh, her boyfriend, her husband, I'm not sure, or whatever, was, like, a, an accomplice at the time. Uh, I don't know if they, like, ever found him. I think they found her first, and they found her in Thailand, and the Thai, the Thai police cooperated and got her back to the States. Um, because I remember it was, like, America's Most Wanted was there to greet her at the airport. And it was crazy to see her on tv again i was like oh my god oh well okay that uh, she's the ponytail bandit so that was the first one so the second one so honestly like i said i don't i don't have a whole lot of time so i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna like um tell the rest of the story and then i'm so sorry we're gonna have to like finish this up last time i didn't do it like a cook or next time i didn't do it like a cooking show this time I just kind of made my bento boxes and was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, so, yeah, I apologize. We didn't get a finished craft today, but oh well. We will, this just means 
Um, I definitely have to go live on Wednesday or Sunday. Um, because I'll have to finish these. <laughs> okay, so the second person I knew that ended up on America's Most Wanted. So obviously I'm, I'm going to give a little bit of a trigger warning with this one because um, it does deal with like kids, uh, things with kids. So just be aware of that. Um, but yeah, so when I, yeah, when I went to school um, in Indonesia there, I had a teacher there and he was my eighth grade uh, social teacher. <laughs> so you are a liar and exaggerated like you name. Mm -hmm. Of course. Duh. <laughs> Just um, but, uh, yeah, no, I didn't know any of these people. I just looked up their stuff. I just kidding. <laughs> Obviously, I know these. I I know these people because I don't just look up who's on America. So it's one. <laughs> but uh, also, these people were on there like a while back. They like um, this person, the sex person that I'm talking about, is no longer with us. Uh, I will tell you why. Um, but like, yeah. So they are not on America's Most Wanted list anymore. But so, anyways, I had my. Um, well, oh, where'd my grain of rice go? <laughs> I lost a grain of rice. Um, so yeah, second person I had was my eighth grade social teacher, unfortunately, which, okay, so I am going to say that there are probably some people in the chat who have heard about this one because it was like, it was a huge deal when it broke and it was like, it was kind of hard for me to take in because, so <clears throat> he was basically named one of the most prolific child abusers out there and that he had been doing this for like 10 plus years and he had been, there was footage of it. So, but he was also using substances. So people who were in that footage probably didn't know. So yeah, super disturbing. <laughs> and the craziest part about it is like he used to, so he used to volunteer as a leader for very many travel groups. So there was a lot of like groups that you could join where you could take a trip at the end of it, right? As long as like, obviously you have to pay for the trip and everything as well, right? But, and then um, every year um, you do go on like one week long school wheel, uh, field trip in high school. So like uh, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, I went each year had a different place to go to type thing, right? Eighth grade, obviously, and then obviously all the teachers go. Eighth grade was like a huge like backpacking through the rainforest type thing, which was like again experiences I can never have again. That like I just I'm like oh I can't believe I had those experiences and I wish that I like didn't take them for granted as much as I did because I was a dumb kid, you know? But, um, so, uh, yeah, we, he was on that trip and like, it just, now knowing the things I know, all I can think about is he would, he targeted like boys. And so I know a lot, like, I know for me, like there was never any red flags. If anything, like, and this is why it was so hard for me to take in. He was probably one of my favorite teachers. <sighs> and I just like, he was funny. I actually did well in his class and school was something that like, I really struggled with a lot. Um, uh, I would have a really hard time. And like, that was one classroom that like, I didn't have a hard time. But now I'm like, ugh, ugh. 
like it just makes me feel so uncomfortable right and so yeah like the crazy thing about it is is like his wife worked as like a high-end like exec type thing in the international school circuit so he had been traveling around international schools doing this for over 25 years and before this he had had a situation in the states while he was a teacher where this an incident had happened but somehow it didn't get put on his record. It didn't get put anywhere because when you're an international school teacher, yeah, you get your records checked. And also if you're like a felon, you can't leave your country, right? So it's just the way that he was able to like get around this stuff. So anyway, I should say his name was, and I have no problem saying this because he, he is known and he is known for the things, the terrible things he did. Uh, his n name was William Vahey. So I will say I do feel bad for his, he had two sons. Uh, I always wondered. And I, I still wonder to this day, like, who of my friends could have possibly had so, you know like I don't know I never had any friends come to me and tell me that they had really awkward situations with him but like the funny thing is too is like he always had issues with parents and faculty but he but students loved him and now you look back on that and you're like well no shit no shit uh April his name was William Vahey yeah so uh I can I'll actually type it into the chat here. So if you want to go take a look at him, you can. Um, he ended up every... So what had happened? Okay, so he had flash drives of things. And he was working overseas. And uh, one of his staff members found this flash drive. And... Um, gave it over to the police and that was how this whole thing started um basically and then it ended with him he committed suicide um because the walls were caving in and he yeah he was found dead in a bathtub so it just like such a fucked up story <laughs> but yeah, it's just crazy to, like, I don't know. I mean, we all, like, you could talk about, like, the famous people that you meet in your lifetime and things like that, right? It's just, it's crazy the people that you end up crossing path, paths with. And for these people to have been, well, especially for my eighth grade social teacher to have been a prolific abuser was just not something I ever thought could have been the case and now you look back on that and you just think of like everything that like how much it made like how much it made sense why he was the way he was and did the things he did and acted the way he acted and and why teachers liked to, or why students loved him teachers found him a little bit weird you know there was a reason right so it, oh, it's just crazy 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 Right. So, but anyways, I'm, I have, I do actually, okay. Yeah. I do actually have to get running here. I'm sorry. It's a little bit shorter. I have a crafty Sunday this Sunday, but, um, we did get like, I know you guys can't see them cause I have like a million little teeny tiny grains of rice here that I've just been like, <laughs> while we've been talking. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I will save this stuff for next week and I might actually like prepare a couple things, maybe a little bit more so that we can actually finish this next week. Um, but yeah, I guess maybe next week you'll see uh, some more bento boxes, maybe the same thumbnail. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyways, I'm going to let you guys go for tonight. Um, and as always, if you have any questions or comments or you guys have something you want me to look into and talk about on the channel uh you can leave me 
a comment below. Don't forget, if you like this video, to like it, sub, subscribe, all that junk. It's boring, I know, but it helps me. <laughs> um, so always much appreciated. And yeah, I guess I think I will see you guys. I don't want to say when. I'm not going to say Wednesday night. I'm going to say maybe Thursday night, actually, because I I have an, I have an inkling that Wednesday, I just, yeah. I'm going to keep Wednesday open for now and maybe do Thursday. So we'll do uh, a make with me Thursday and maybe we can finish these, work on these some more. Hell, maybe we'll just make bento boxes all week. Maybe that's what this week will be. <laughs> Who knows, right? Um, perfect. Thank you, April. Okay, good. I will do a part two. <laughs> uh, oh, Tuesday too. Okay, yeah. Like, I'm not sure. I just, I can't remember. Tuesday, Wednesday, like, I feel like I need to, like, book off. Um, and then, uh, so I might do it Thursday. I don't know. We'll see. But like I said, always follow me on Twitter. Twitter is the best place to get updated on what I'm doing. If I'm not going live on Wednesday or Sunday, I will tell you when I'm going live or why I'm not going live on there. Um, so the link is in the description too. If you do want to follow my Twitter, please do. Um, so yeah, we'll do a part D on Wednesday or on Thursday or Wednesday or whichever day we decide depending on what's coming up and then uh, if we don't finish them that day we'll finish our bento boxes on Sunday so maybe we'll have a week of bento boxes and by the end of it we'll have four different types of bento boxes oh. <laughs> all right guys I will see you guys next time um, and yeah we'll make some more bento boxes <laughs> all right guys have a good night and i hope you enjoyed um my crazy fbi uh well america's most wanted stories and the jeff Wittick update that's really all that's like going on and gabby hannah still a little bit <laughs> but uh we knew that so it's okay <laughs> um she she is providing entertainment for many at the moment so we shouldn't complain <laughs> Okay, I will talk to you guys uh, later on in this week and we'll continue making some bento boxes. Thanks for coming again, guys. See you later. Bye. <laughs> Streams take so long to end.